Namaste everyone, today is day 2 and 3 um, of our challenge, I'm putting the two days um, together and for me it's day 3, day 2 was very interesting and so is today basically the challenge has allowed me personally uh, to just develop more self-awareness throughout my day or bring awareness into the areas of uh, my consciousness or into the times of my day when I'm actually less aware. I'm busy, I'm distracted and so forth. So this challenge, just a single focus challenge of uh, bringing awareness into how my mind works has allowed me to be more present. So that is one of the that is one of the basic benefits so far of the challenge is awareness and it's allowing me to be present. So those are the gifts you yeah. should expect from the challenge to just become more aware and more present. Now there is a lot of questions and a lot of reflections about this challenge and they're all different of course because we all have different dilemmas or different things we're dealing with. For me I will show you how I turned it around. For me the original was to not engage in anything that's not uplifting me. As long as I, I am informed about it. I don't want to be blind and misinformed and just hide from the truth. That's not my point. But once you know the truth, you have to move forward. Just constantly staying, staying in a truth that's not necessarily uh, uplifting. It's unnecessary to your soul, to your creative self and so forth. It's a disservice to, uh, to your creative mind. So for me, I turned it around. If I, if I feel that I live in an unawakened world, which is, um, I think it's also a Buddhist concept that most of the world is asleep. We are, all of us are to some degree asleep, some more than others and some more awakened than others, but we all have a level of <sighs> unconsciousness. Um, so for me, <laughs> the way I turned it around is, all right, I don't like the fact that I uh, there is so much um, unconsciousness in this world, but how do I turn this around, right? Well, what are the areas in which I can awaken more? So I basically turned the mirror back and that has opened a whole new dimension of areas in my life where I can awaken. Now, when you decide to consciously work on something, one of the things that can happen and happens a lot is people will try to resist it or things will challenge you. Things will come your way that will try to challenge you. People will come your way and say, but no, no, wait a minute, this time this is different. There is more through you need to know, more to worry about or more to, more negative stuff to hear about. And you just let it wash over you. You just observe people in their own patterns and you see it as what it is because there is a, there is a level uh, to which you should learn and a level to which you should serve and uplift so there is a balance between the two and that's that's what the challenge is personally personally teaching me now a lot of you are struggling with something completely different or maybe it is a form of it but it's expressed in a different way and it is self-criticism low self-esteem now grab a journal and ask yourself oh uh, regardless of what you're dealing with write down every morning three things three patterns that you have observed about your mind those are patterns and you can write the same ones if nothing is changing just write those down three par patterns that you're observing and just stay in the observing mode now later on we can see how we can reroute the patterns or change the patterns but for now just try to deepen your awareness basically <sighs> make sure that you're starting to get to know yourself and your mind so you're not unconsciously allowing all kinds of thoughts throughout your day but you know what you're the observer you're observing your mind and you're like ah you're this this little thought again so you're observing as if you're observing other people because for me it's easy to spot when people have patterns right and I'm turning the same the same thing around and finding new ways to awaken or to find uh, ways to repattern certain areas of my mind right so that's about it i just wanted to kind of quickly 
touch up on, on it awareness throughout your day and um, I wanted to say a lot of you are dealing with low self-esteem now awareness will allow you awareness of, of your mind and just being aware will allow you to be present being present is the greatest gift you can give to yourself is self-love and better self-esteem because you're in, in the moment there is no past no future no comparison no worry you're in the moment and that is the greatest gift you can give yourself um, that's the greatest gift of self-love and I will answer one question uh, that was very interesting I will answer it briefly and we're done for day two and day three just keep writing in your journal things that you're observing become more self-aware deepen your self-awareness and see your patterns uh, because we'll go deeper into this because later on you will see that the way you treat your own self that's how you're communicating to others to treat you that's what you're um, modeling to your children and so forth so in in essence you don't have the right to not love yourself or to not treat yourself right because you're uh, allowing um, that same treatment from the external world towards you and also furthermore if you don't love yourself you cannot love uh, someone else truly and unconditionally so that's why we want to truly learn modestly to love ourselves and to have self-esteem from a place of humility and modesty not from a place of arrogance there is a massive difference and many people think that self-love is some form of egotistical behavior and that's why they've learned from an early age not to love themselves so that they're not this arrogant person there is a massive um, massive distinction arrogance comes from comparison and competitiveness with others and self-love is rooted in deeper values like connection with um, love source source god divine essence and so forth the higher wisdom higher truth etc so let's get to the question here is the question lots of good questions um, so I'll try to answer other ones in other videos and keep the videos short. So it's from Katrin. I love this, Ali. Particularly your thoughts on self-importance. Our world is so technologically fueled now and social media is ever-present. It is easy to be wrapped up in social fantasy. I have felt for some time now that social media is inauthentic and pretentious to the point that I have limited my interaction. When I did engage, I felt overwhelmed and anxious. Maybe I feared how people perceive me. Maybe I felt judged. I've noticed our culture shifting and cell phones and devices are becoming the only means of communicating. I don't want to be sheepish and follow. I've been aware of how media makes me feel. Do you have any insights as to how to handle this? Do you feel my discontent is deeper? than just seeing past the highlight reels and facade that is displayed on these media platforms. How do you handle this yourself being highly social? Um, that's an amazing question because obviously I have had to consciously deal with this. I have had to actually think about it as I was, uh, as I decided to go into, uh, into social media basically um, teaching rather than just teaching in town I had to sit and think do I want to do this um, is the sacrifice too big of uh, you know uh, just losing some of your um, uh, some of your um, privacy or uh, so forth so I had to uh, delve into this and uh, oftentimes we are all different and some people are supposed to be more private than others because we are all built differently even if you look at people from astrological perspective in the chart because uh, I'm semi pro astrologer in the charts you can see which people should be in, in the social uh, media and which people should abstain from it and so forth and for some people it's easy to handle it because it doesn't go to their head neither the good nor the bad you just do it as your service and as you if you take your ego out of it it doesn't matter if you uh, post for a selfie and for you this is just part of your campaign it's not uh, something that your ego is desperate for 
then it's a completely different thing than if you're 20 years old, completely lost in it, getting validation from from just the comments or the likes uh, and so forth. So it really matters how you approach it. If you're coming from the place of I'm ready to offer and this is who I am and I will offer my authentic self and even if I participate by the rules of social media that seem very egotistical itself is that's okay because we're participating in the forms in which right now um, it is running I do selfies because that's that's how uh, that's how the social media works and I'm okay with it just because I'm just doing it from a place of I'm building something that I'm passionate about and I want to spread the message so I will take the steps towards achieving my um, my bigger goal and the smaller steps are nothing major to me so that's how you approach it, it there, there is a massive distinction between um, different people and how they approach social media but for us to judge anybody it's pointless because we don't know anything about them and where they're coming from and, uh, why they're doing what they're doing so forget about people look at yourself and your authenticity if it's something that's very uncomfortable for you no need to force yourself to do it but if it's something that you feel that oh I should participate more in this new medium of communication then find your authentic voice or authentic face or authentic self within this be humble and participate and to a degree you need um, a little bit of a thick skin so that the good and the bad and the bad they both do not affect you it's maybe it sounds bad to some of you if the good doesn't affect you but you can't take things too seriously because that's your persona for this lifetime the way you have a social media persona the same way you have a persona even in life and that's still not your true self you're just trying to be as authentic as you can, but you're never purely the most authentic you can be because we still have the ego, we still have the mask, we still have the body. So we're trying to express ourselves with authenticity, honesty, and desire to serve and give. And I leave it at that. That is my advice. It's just, it's where you're coming from. So those are the two things about social media. Try not to judge anybody. Try to be accepting if someone is very i noticed that there is a lot of judgment towards uh, uh, young beautiful women on instagram uh, i see all these fitness models and stuff and the comments are just ridiculously nasty um obviously uh, this all comes from inner imbalance from the people that are commenting so try not to judge even though the people that appear very vain don't worry about it it's not you and uh, and always try to stay rooted, grounded, grounded in true values. As long as you're grounded, it doesn't matter. Even if you get recognition, if, uh, if you get criticism, you're rooted in what's more important. You are there to be your authentic self. And for if it's a career for you or work for you, then you're there to serve and to give. So those things are irrelevant, the little media, social media things. Um, there is a lot more I want to say about social media, but I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I'll log in tomorrow. Little funny thing, the reason why I didn't log in yesterday is I left the login for the evening. And Sophie was so fussy that evening she wanted to go out at 3 p.m. and normally it used to be 5 p.m. with the change of time she's bringing it uh, earlier and earlier I was so busy with work and kind of was trying to get her food to be cooking while we we're gone and was multitasking before we leave and she was talking to me with her voice so I locked myself out of the house for over two hours we took the biggest walk and by the time I was back, it was uh, very late. We were back at, I think, 6 and I had to cook. And so I was like, I will put day 2 and day 3 together. And this is part of my challenge as well. Because part of my challenge is to not get frustrated at things that are extremely challenging. Because I could have gotten back in the house had I not been pregnant. 
um, I was gonna jump a fence but now I can't jump a fence so all of a sudden I have to deal with that limitation and I had I felt frustration for 20 minutes and turned it around into gratitude so <laughs> do your gratitude whenever you're challenged whenever you're critical of yourself or others gratitude and journal the things that you're observing about yourself I've, I've become so aware of my own patterns and I see other people's patterns that are trying to come my way and just let it wash over you. Love you. Namaste.